OK, so we're going to evaluate this limit. And you can see that the difficult part here is going to be dealing with this cube root term. But before we get to that, we'll just build up by considering, first of all, what would happen if we had a similar looking limit, but with a square root instead of a cube root, so we can see where this method comes from. So let's imagine we have a square root of something minus some other term. So let's just label these, we'll call it a minus b. So if we call this one a, we call this one b. So this is just a minus b. And then the idea here is we can use a trick which is effectively the reverse of rationalising the denominator. So we can write a minus b as a minus b times a plus b, all divided by a plus b. So then in the numerator, we get this difference of two squares expression, a squared minus b squared, and we still need to divide through by a plus b. So you can see here, if we had the square root term as our a, we've managed to square that to get a slightly nicer expression in the numerator, but there is still a square root in the denominator. But this trick can be quite helpful just to get it into a slightly different form where it might be easier to take the limit. So we could try doing the exact same thing for our limit we're interested in here with the cube root, but unfortunately the difference of two squares identity, that would just square this, but we really want to cube this term. So let's imagine again we've got a minus b, and now we want to multiply this by something so that it becomes, instead of a squared minus b squared, we're going to aim for a cubed minus b cubed. So the question is, what do we actually need to multiply this by to get a cubed minus b cubed? So we can do this as a polynomial division, or we can think of this as, in order to make a cubed, we need to multiply this a by an a squared. But then this introduces a negative b times a squared term, which we don't want. So to counter this, we could multiply this a by a b. So this would give us another plus b times a squared term, which would cancel out then. So we introduce a plus a b. Then this introduces a negative b times a b, so a negative a b squared term, which we can counteract by multiplying this a by a positive b squared term. And then this gives us negative b times b squared does indeed give us a negative b cubed. So this, you can check, is equivalent to a cubed minus b cubed, just to show where this is coming from. And then we can use this fact to say then that a minus b is equivalent to a minus b multiplied by this a squared plus a b plus b squared, and then dividing through by this a squared plus a b plus b squared. And this is also equivalent then to a cubed minus b cubed, but we need to divide through by this term, just like we did for the square root situation. So now we can use this expression to say the difference of two terms. We could say our a is this root n cubed plus n squared, and our b is just the n term here. We can use this to get our limit into a different format, where it will hopefully be easier to evaluate. So using this identity with these terms as our a and b, we can rewrite this difference as, first of all, doing a cubed, we cube all of this term, which cancels out the cube root, which gives us n cubed plus n squared, and then taking away b cubed, we just take away n cubed. So this gives us a really nice expression in our numerator there, the n cubes cancel, and we're just left with n squared as our new numerator. Now the denominator is going to be a little bit more complicated, so this a squared, we've got this cube root term, term all squared, so we can write this as n cubed plus n squared, and we'll write it to the power of two thirds, it's the cube root all squared, just in a different format. And similarly for our a b term, we'll write this as n cubed plus n squared to the power of one third, then multiplied by n. And now we also need this plus b squared term, which is just plus n squared at the end there. So now the next step is going to be to divide through in the numerator and denominator just by n squared. So you can see this will give us a nice 1 in the numerator, and in the denominator this term when we divide through by n squared is just going to give us 1. But then we need to think a bit more carefully about these other two terms. So for this middle term if we want to divide through by n squared, we could first of all divide through by this n, then we'd need to divide this term through by n as well. And we're actually going to take advantage of the fact that if we want to divide this whole term raised to the power of one third, divide that by n, this is equivalent to dividing the terms on the inside by n cubed. So here we're just taking advantage of the fact that n cubed, when we raise that to the power of one third, 
we get n. So dividing the terms inside the bracket by n cubed and then taking the cube root is equivalent to just dividing through by n. So that gives us a total outcome there of dividing through by n squared if we just get rid of this n term on the outside. And we can apply the same trick here. It turns out we actually divide the terms inside the bracket there by n cubed as well. And this will give us a net result of dividing this whole term by n squared, which is what we were aiming for. And again, this is just taking advantage of the fact that n cubed raised to the power of 2 thirds is just n squared. So if we divide through by n cubed and then raise this to the power of 2 thirds, we've effectively only really divided through by n squared. So the upshot of all of this is when we divide everything through by n squared in both the numerator and the denominator, we get a numerator of 1, then in our denominator, dividing these inner terms by n cubed gives us n cubed divided by n cubed gives us 1, n squared divided by n cubed gives us a 1 over n, and this is still to the power of 2 thirds. Then we have the exact same thing divided through by n cubed again, so we get another 1 plus 1 over n, now raised to the power of 1 third, and this n here has cancelled when we divided through by n squared. And finally, when we divide this n squared term by n squared, we just get plus another 1. So now the limit's in a much more easy format to see, that when we take limits as n goes to infinity, this 1 over n term is just going to go to 0, and similarly this 1 over n term is going to go to 0 as n tends to infinity. So in the limit as n goes to infinity, then this whole fraction expression is just going to be 1 over 1 to the 2 thirds, which is 1, 1 to the 1 third, which is also 1, plus another 1. So this is going to be equivalent to 1 over 1 plus 1 plus 1 gives us 1 third. So then we can conclude, taking limits, that the original limit we were interested in, just having been written in this different format of the cube root of n cubed plus n squared minus n, is just going to be equal to 1 third.